Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you to another uh, a episode of our program, Faith Way, the Way of Faith, with Pastor Oliver and Ajemba. And I happen to be Oliver and Ajemba. God bless you. Thank you for continuing to watch us. Thank you for tuning in to Agape TV. Thank you for your prayer. Just to encourage you that the lines are open for prayers. I will give you the line to call in for prayer at the end. Always remember that we are here for you. And long after I have finished speaking, just keep watching. Some other people are coming up and the Lord will continue to bless you. This is the mission that God said to us. He said in his word that as long as, as long as I live, said the Lord, that the knowledge of my glory shall cover the earth as the water has covered the sea. That is what we are plugging to Jesus. Give us an assignment. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So we thank God for that opportunity to be able to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. And then rather than what I've been sharing the past couple of weeks, you know, um, made for signs and wonders. The reason why we are saying it, we are we are camping there is that it is the will of God that you know who you are. You know, one of the things, one of the one of the lies, the enemy, the lie the enemy played against Adam and Eve. Adam, uh, the uh, the serpent or the devil through the serpent said to uh, said to Eve. In the day you will eat of the of that of the fruit of that tree, you shall be as God. So it was man's attempt. The high yielding to that temptation was part of, was an attempt also to become what she is already. They were made in the image of God. So we, we, we want to, we've been trying to establish the fact that signs and wonders were made for signs and wonders. It's not what we chase after. It is what accompanies the gospel of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, And you shall receive power after the, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. You know, we have taken a dimension of that, of that command to be witnesses and we have tried to go about witnessing and sharing the gospel. But if you look at a, a careful study of that word witness there, Jesus was, the Lord was not just saying that we should just be testifying witnesses only, speaking witnesses only. As a matter of fact, that what he meant there was that we should be tabernacles of witnesses. Tabernacles of witnesses because we are made for signs and for wonders. I should not just be a witness of Jesus by the things I say. I should be a witness of the gospel by my life, by my actions. So the gospel of Jesus is, should not just be communicated only by my speaking. And the speaking is important. The speaking is the biggest part of it. But I should be, I'm called to be a tabernacle or witness. And we read in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5, God says, I will work a work in your time, and shall you not know it? Men and brethren, God is moving mightily in our world, in our day, and in our generation. Let no one lie to you that signs and wonders have ceased. I've heard Eloquent Bible scholars tell us that signs and wonders, miracles, speaking in tongues, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they are no longer for the church today. That's not true. The one basic question to ask is this. Is God less loving than he was before? No. God is the same. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. He healed the sick. He raised the dead because he had compassion on them. He is still the same compassionate Jesus. That he was, that his compassion has not this, uh, uh, diminished. And the, the, the church starts seeing signs and wonders when the church went into unbelief in the dark ages. Traditions of men took over the church, and God could not back up, and the, the word of God was no longer preached. And God only backs his word when his word is preached in faith and in power. God backs it up with signs and wonders following. So when the church in history, stop preaching the true gospel, the way to tradition. That's when the power of God withdrew from the church. 
And many have come to that to say to me that the, 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 the signs and wonders was necessary to birth the church. But now that the church has been birthed, that we no longer need signs and wonders. That's not true. Hallelujah. The same God, signs and wonders, I mean, I mean, the same God of signs and wonders in the past is the same God of signs and wonders today. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't let anyone deny your faith. Believe God for the impossible. Expect miracles to happen as you share the gospel of Jesus. We don't seek after it, but he seeks after it. Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, and raise the dead. You know what interesting thing? He told us to do it. He didn't ask us to tell God about it. God didn't tell us to tell God about the sick. Jesus said he shall receive power. Now that we have the power of the Holy Ghost, if God no be there telling God about the sick, the assignment, the mandate on you and I is to heal the sick. And one of the ways we do it is through the laying on of hands. This sign shall follow those that believe in my name, said the Lord Jesus. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. And I want to say this to you. People of God, they, you know, the, 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 the church of God, was, the church was breathed in great glory. In Acts of Apostles chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible told us about that magnificent experience. The Holy Ghost came and filled those 120 men. And they began to speak in tongues. Ordinary men were turned into extraordinary men. And they went out and tore the kingdom of darkness apart. It got a point as they began to manifest the realities of a new creation. The realities of the kingdom. At some point, some men beheld God in them and screamed that the gods have come again in human form. That was an unbelieving race. That same God is alive today. Is alive today. And I want to say to you that the church that is going in glory, the church is going to be going on a greater power and glory than the day the church was born. Do we have scriptures for it? The Bible said the glory of the latter house shall supersede that of the former. We are in a day, we believe we have come to the last days. And I want to say to you that everything that God did, remember, it was not Paul and Peter that were doing signs and wonder. It was the Holy Spirit working with them. The Bible said God working with them, confirming their word with signs and wonder. All the confirmations the Lord gave to the ministry of the apostles, all the confirmations in signs and wonders that God gave to the ministers and apostles, the same Holy Spirit is giving that same confirmation to the ministry of the word. Wherever the word is preached in faith and in anointing, the Holy Spirit still gives the same confirmation. In the song after the day of Pentecost, the Bible told us in Acts chapter 3, by the beautiful gate, John, Peter and John were pastors, and they saw an, a man who was there begging, crippled. The man was crippled from birth. And as cost as was his his custom, when he saw Peter and John at the beautiful gate, the Bible said he fastened his eyes on them, expecting to receive something. Peter and John said, "Look at what! Hallelujah! Glory to God! It's not a time to say look unto Jesus, because the man doesn't know how to look unto Jesus. The church should be able to say to the world, look unto us." The church will have to tell the world, look unto us. You as a believer, I as a child of God should have to tell the world, look on us. Because if we tell them, look unto God, they don't know where to find God. The ignorance of days gone by is that men have sought for God and called trees God, called the moon God, called the sun God, called us God, called oceans God. So if you tell them, look on God, they may start looking at the ocean. The Bible said the times of this ignorance God went at, but now he's commanding every man to repent. The church of Jesus Christ, we have to tell the world, look on us. And I dare you today to tell the sinner, look on me. If you have seen me, you have seen God. I'm a tabernacle of witness. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive and he lives in me. 
Peter and John said, look at us. The man looked expecting to receive arms. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. He said, they said unto him, silver and gold we do not have, but that which we have we give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And I want to say to you, it's not just Peter and John that have it, you and I, we do have it. The difference is that they use their own, we have not used their own. Somebody said, can you, can, can you explain that we have it? They were apostles. Those signs were not performed because they were apostles. The Bible says these signs are for the believing ones. Signs and wonder for the believers, not just apostles. And I'm not trying to put the office of the ministry down. There are greater manifestations in ministerial offices. You know, somehow we live in a time where people go about and give themselves titles. But it's not just, it's not just, it's not just that you say you are, there must be accompanying manifestations that set you apart in an office. Glory to God. So Peter, you know, Peter writes about that in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. He said, you know, you know, you know, Simon Peter, the apostle, to those who have received like precious faith with us. He's saying that every believer has received the same kind of, of quality of faith that they received from Jesus. The difference is that Peter and John put their faith to work. They put it to proof. You and I have been doing nothing with our own. Many of us have reduced our faith to just arguments and explanations. There is a silver and gold we do not have. But what we have, we give unto you. I am here to say to you that what Peter and John had that day, you and I do have it. We have the Holy Ghost. Oh, we are born again. Jesus is in us. The gospel is in us. What Peter and John had that day, we have it also. So you can say to the blind, look, you can say to the cripple, look at me. And I release you today to say to the lost, look at me. Praise the Lord. I remember running into a group of young people who were excited about the horoscope. You know, we were in a bus traveling, and they were having a conversation. One of them talked to me and said, hey, uh, what, what is your star? I told him I don't have a star. I'm one of the stars myself. I mean, if you, what do you need? Look at me. What do you need? I will do better to you than any horoscope one can give you. Those are guesses. I am here representing God. Jesus said, go in my name. I am here in the name of the Lord Jesus. What do you need? When they back out, they back out. Praise the Lord. What Peter and John had that day, they said, silver and gold we do not have, but we have something. We have, well, you and I have the same thing. God is moving all over the world. The Holy Spirit is moving all over the world. May the work of God in our days not be hidden from our eyes. Thank God for America. Thank God for what the Lord has done in this nation. Thank God for what the Lord is doing with this nation. I mean the church in this nation. And thank God for what the Lord will do with the church in this nation. But I want to say to you that the move of God is beyond America. The move of God, the acts of God is beyond America. Become a world Christian. Throw your windows open and see that God is doing signs and what. Even in this nation, the dead is being raised by those who expect it. The reason why we are not seeing it in America because we are not expecting it. We have allowed people to talk us out of it. And in doing it, they have solidified our unbelief. But in the name of Jesus, the dead is still being raised in America. It is not man, it, it, it is the same Jesus is alive. And as the days get closer to the coming of the Lord, signs and wonders will increase in intensity. And don't expect it to flow from the apostles, from the prophets, from the teachers, from the preachers, like me. It's flowing from the whole body of Christ. Because the garment on Jesus in his early ministry that the woman with the issue of blood touched and virtue flew out and healed her 
That garment was hanging on the body. The garment was not on the head. The garment was on the body. So the same anointing is on the body of Christ. And if you remember the body of Christ, you are fully dead in the power of God. You can tell somebody that is sick, touch me. Hallelujah. I've had that happen. I've had that happen. I've had people say, let me touch you. And I recognize they're not touching me because I'm just Oliver. They recognize that there is grace, there is power, there is anointing. And, uh, you know, you know they, uh, they really don't need to touch me. But thank God that they found a point of contact. And they touched and got their miracles. I've had the opportunity of touching someone, not praying for the person. Passing by, touching her, touched her, she ran after me and said, Will you touch me? A neck pain flew out of my body. One of the amazing stories of science and wonders in the body done by laymen because these are the days that the prophecies of Joel is coming to fruition and manifesting. And on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples preached, they said, This is that spoken by the prophet Joel. It's like all of us on that day, I will pour out of my spirit. That same Holy Ghost is still being poured out, and young men and women are aligning themselves to God, and God is manifesting through them. I was invited to a little town in southeastern Nigeria, Oji River, as a guest speaker in a full gospel business-based fellowship meeting. It was their 10th anniversary celebration, and I was the guest speaker. And there I experienced some of the most dynamic manifestations of God and testimonies that I ever heard. One woman, precious woman, was there. She gave a testimony that River Bristol today. She had a baby. And um, the first thing she noticed was that when it was time to breastfeed the baby, the baby wouldn't move until the nipples touched his mouth. Over time, they noticed that that baby is not really reacting to light. He's only reacting to touch. So they took him back to the hospital. And they found out that light does not penetrate the retina. So the baby was born blind. He was four months old when he had the first operation, eye operation. When the child began to, baby began to crawl, he will crawl and crawl and crawl out because he doesn't see. He will only stop when he hits his head on the wall. He will start crying. So part of this story, because of time, I was only talk. And the woman learned to live with the problem. The woman learned to manage the problem, taking advantage of every help that science could provide. And we thank God for science. We thank God for the time we are living in that there's so much help available for the invalid. For the disabled, rather. For, I apologize for that. For the disabled. There is so much help available. So the one left to do with the problem, send the child to a special school for the blind. But I want to say to you, as much as we have made progress in science and technology, that has not solved the problem of humanity. Jesus Christ is still the answer. By the time the boy was 17 years old, it was becoming difficult for the mom to handle. You know, living a full life of taking care of a child that was blind, now a teenager that was blind. And um, that day at work, she, the woman said that this person that works with her, Every day the man comes to work with this smile that lights all the whole place. And the joy in the man's face used to make her angry. And she would say, why would anybody be smiling like this? Doesn't he have a problem in the world? I know I am living with a problem. So what did the, woman, the, the man say to her? Come to our fellowship. And that's full gospel with the fellowship. The woman said, if I come to your fellowship, do they pray for people in your church? She said, yeah, we pray for people. She said, I'm going to come. So she came. Ordinary men, businessmen, be full of the Holy Ghost. After the, 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 the gospel was preached, nobody would make a mention. So she kept hoping that they would say, it would call for anybody who has problems to come for prayers. And nobody, they, they didn't call. 
No call was no altar call was made for but an altar call was made for salvation. She came out and gave her life to Christ, hoping that someone will make an altar call for those that have problems to come out for prayer. But it was not done. And they said, Grace, the meeting was over. She walked to one of the brethren and said, I have a problem. I have a boy that, is, that was born blind. I don't know all I could. Can you people pray? The brother said, Yes, we can pray. Call three people, they, get, they got together, join hands together, join hands with her. They prayed a simple prayer and asked Jesus to open the boy's eyes. And they said, Amen. They read to him, Mark 11, they read to her, Mark 11 24. All things possible, it is that when you pray, when you pray, believe that you have received and you shall have it. She went home, got home, nothing happened. The boy was still blind, as blind as he had always been from birth. A day passed, two days passed, on the third day, something got a hold of her. She said, those are Jesus' people. They said Jesus hears them when they pray. They have prayed for her son to begin to see. And I believe the boy can see. I believe that Jesus answered their prayer. So he called the boy, brought him and sat him down, and took a ball and a chalk and began to write. He told the boy, continue to stare ahead of you. I'm going to write, tell me what you see. She wrote the first thing. The boy read it out to him, to her. She was excited. She cleaned it up and wrote again the second time. The boy read it back to him. She cleaned it up and read it the boy read. The boy now stood up and said, wow, mom, is that you? I can see you. Is this television? Is this this? Is this that? I mean, hallelujah, glory to God. I want to say, that was signs and wonders through ordinary men. God is doing things like this. I was there. I saw the woman. The boy is now fully, has fully from college right now. He's married, but he was born blind. How did he get to see the same Jesus of John, of John chapter 9? That opened the eyes of the man that was born blind. The same Jesus was the one that did it. Let's not stop God from doing what he want to do. God is doing signs and wonders in our time through ordinary people all over the world. The dead is being raised. The, the, the blind are seen. The crippled, the crippled, they are walking. Get on the move with God. Right now, wherever you are, I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to bring your word within the time we have. And I pray God that this world will rise up in our hearts to turn us into this mighty army of signs and wonders. And as they step out in faith today, we expect the manifestations of the Holy Ghost in tongues, in prophecies, in miracles, and in demonstrations of the supernatural to your glory and praise. Thank you Lord for hearing us and for as many as 